Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil Shirati, a professor and consultant. In today's session, we will start with introduction to engineering economics. So before starting this one, we may uh, come across few questions. What do you mean by engineering economics? Why? Who cares about that? And why do engineers need to study it? Now we know the efficient functioning of any business organization would enable it to provide goods or services at a lower price. In the process of managing organizations, the managers at different levels should take appropriate economic decision which will help in minimizing the investment minimizing the operating and maintaining maintenance expenditure besides increasing the revenue increasing the savings and others which will be the gains to the organization this can be achieved through engineering economics which will deal with the methods that enable us to make economic decisions towards minimizing the cost and also maximize the benefit to the business organization. So as an engineering economics, it will help for making the decisions that is using the engineering and mathematical analysis and the synthesis process. The knowledge and the technique of engineering will help in evaluating the worthiness of any commodity or any goods or any including services also. So engineering economics analysis will help you to select the best alternatives among the available options for you. Now ec economics is the big part of an engineering job. Okay, An engineer must translate scientific ideas into a product systems that is for better mankind. Ideas need to make some sense economically and engineers must be able to convince others that is so. For example, if I am making a uh, designing a shaft and uh, I'll say I got a diameter of 30 mm and length is some 200 mm and if I got a material uh, where I can use mild steel, okay, I, uh, which will be around 60 rupees kg. But uh, I should not uh, randomly select, okay, let's go for stainless steel, which is 500 rupee, uh, 350 rupees kg. But the what about the manufacturing cost? All will get added up. So uh, as an engineer, while design stage itself, if I have a knowledge of economics also, I can decide which material I have to choose. Now, why engineers must study engineering economics? Engineer students should be prepared themselves with the economic empowerment so they could first manage their own wealth, help them in starting their wealth also, help them in starting their own business also and also during their managerial period itself. So what I'm, I told you the earlier example where as an engineer if I have a knowledge of uh, the economics also in the design itself uh, stage itself I can decide okay there will be a huge price difference if I go from instead of mild steel if I go for stainless steel okay so there only I can decide if both the material are satisfying my means and the cost is the major factor I can go for mild steel but suppose there is a situation where uh, Technically, I can go for mild steel, but the environment itself is corrosive in nature. I can go for then stainless steel and I can accordingly, I can convince the customer also. Now, what are the in general the goals of an, any organization? So the organization may be two types. One may be a profit organization and another may be a non-profit organization. So any profit organization so it may be an industry or uh, manufacturing industry or it may be a service industry. What is their goal? To have a, uh, to make money now and also in the future. But what about non-profit organization? 
non profit organization also needs money so that they can run their business okay so it may be ngo so in both the or type of organization worry about the money of they probably cease to exist so if the money is not there any organization irrespective of whether it is a profit or non profit they cannot exist okay now if i see the relationship between economics and the world institutes so if you can see in this picture this is you this is you so you are only related to at this point but as an organization it will have more economics involved but if you see country it will be a more bigger and if you see as a world it is more now this can be easily understood by the next things what about the world as a world it will be uh, dealing with the international trades it will be dealing the balance of payment what is the currency value currency evaluation at international market that is as a world will be doing it but as a country it may be a central government or state government what is their objective from economics point of view what is whatever the tax they have collected how they are spending effectively and efficiently they are spending their taxes what is the uh, gdp growth of the country how uh, what about the distribution of resources support of the institution and public welfare so that is their objective as a country and this will be again related to the economics next as an organization or as a company uh, their objectives will be generate more revenue minimize the cost maximize the profit uh, get a good return on the investment keep a good stock price okay so that is the objective and this all of, to achieve all this objective we have economics involved but as an individual we are dealing with salary investment savings and borrowing but this also needs the knowledge of economics so you can see at each stage uh, either it may be person it may be organization or it is it may be country or as world as a whole you need economics now also business decisions are not simple you may have to take a product decision whether i have to go for this product or not or it may be a process decision itself okay when to do the inspection which operation to be followed which raw material should select it may be a machine selection itself or also facility design how i should design the facility of manufacturing all these decisions are interrelated you cannot make one without affecting many others this is especially true when you are doing a multiple products periods and stages are involved even not to profit must remain financially sound but both types must worry about the money they will probably cease for the existence now if you see the engineering economic decisions so you can see this is a general engineering uh, process where you go from planning to the investment to the manufacturing to the marketing and then to the profit so you can see in each stage there is a economics involved okay so it may be investment it may be marketing it may be manufacturing all this engineering economics is needed now so we can define in general engineering economics is entirely involved with evaluating the comparison of alternatives that involve spending money in the hope of earning more or in simple terms i can say engineering economics deals with the methods that enable one to take economic decision towards minimizing the cost okay and on or maximize the benefit to the organization now in this uh, part of the engineering economics subject we will be dealing with the three modules so as is show model uh, module 3 module 4 and module 5 in module 3 we will be uh, starting with the theory the, uh, theory what is engineering what is economics what is problem solving and decision making what is the law of demand and supply the difference between micro and macro economics equilibrium between what is demand and supply elasticity of demand and price and income in elasticity also law of return 
what is interest rate what is simple interest rates what is compound interest rate what is cash what you mean by cash flow diagram what you mean by personal loans and EMI with a flexible rate or fixed rate all this discussion with problems will happen in module 3 module 4 will be mainly dealing uh, with the three comparison methods that is present worth future worth and annual worth now these are the three methods which will help you to decide which option I have to select depends upon the different uh, options available. It may be you may have three to four machines and out of which you have to select one machine. So from economics point of view, we will be dealing with uh, learning all these three methods. Uh, now these methods will be learned for both. Maybe uh, if uh, two alternative may have same life or it may be have different lives. The last part that is module 5 will be dealing with how I can decide what should be the cost of the component, what should be its selling price, what are marginal cost, all this cost related uh, stuffs plus what you, what is meant by depreciation, how the, uh, you can calculate the depreciation and then about the taxation. So it may be a personal or corporate tax. All this discussion with problems will happen in module 5. So, what is the importance of this subject can be easy, uh, this part of the models can be easily understood by this single simple example crane. So, all of you can see this is a crane and now suppose I want to buy this uh, crane, I have two options. One option, I can buy this at 48 lakh rupees, let's say and then rent it for 80,000 per month. So I got 48 lakhs borrowed or I have it 48 lakhs, go purchase the uh, crane and rent it. So can anyone calculate how many months he will uh, take to recover his uh, my investment? So maybe roughly I may take uh, maybe 50 months to recover my investment okay without any um, without taking interest into consideration now definitely if i'm getting only on rental basis the person who is taking it on a rent he may be earning additional amount more than 80000 definitely because he's been me a rent of 80000 so i have a second option saying that okay i'll go purchase it for 48 lakhs but in second case i will run my own but when i'm running by my own additional cost will come into picture. It may be a labor cost like driver or any other supporting stuff I have to keep to run this crane. Day to day running cost I have to do. Okay. Well, like uh, diesel. Okay. Any other equipment needed. Maintenance. It may be a major minus. I have to take care. So how I should decide whether I have to opt for option one or option two. This whatever the three models you will learn that will help you to make this decision. Now in this case uh, it was a very simple that I have decided the crane which crane I am buying. But, but if there is a situation where we got two cranes okay crane 1 and crane 2 you can see at the left and right side. Now you can uh, let's say the crane one is costing 48 but crane uh, two is cost, uh, costing 48 lakhs another crane is costing 42 lakhs. Now if I add more complication to this let's say maintenance is 2 lakhs here maintenance 2.5 lakhs. Let's say labor who is working on this first crane it is he has to be paid 4 lakhs per annum but the labor on the second maybe sh should be paid uh, around 2.8 lakhs per annum. S sales if I use the first maybe 7 lakhs per annum but the, it may be in the second case it may be 6.8 lakhs the life of first crane may be 10 years the life of second crane may be 7 years and the scrap value may be 5 lakhs and 2 lakhs so you can see by having so many variables right from price to the maintenance labor cost sales life and the scrap value it will become very difficult for anyone to choose which option I, I have, to, which crane I have to choose. But when you go through all these models, you can understand it is becomes very easy if you learn the engineering economics and take the decisions. 
so thank you everyone so this was just an introduction of engineering economics uh, so from the next class uh, next section onwards we will go in this engineering economics in more detail if you have any questions you can contact me or you can mail me thank you everyone